Yeah, take okay. one, take two. <laughs> so we're going to go into the Solitary Islands Aquarium. Yeah, take a look should, around there. Should be good. Yeah, let's go have a look. Let's go. What was that? It's alive, I think, whatever it is. Oh, it's not a log. No. Yeah. It's moving, see? It's got like only 20 little feet at the end of it. Oh, it is too. Feet are moving. Oh look, it's like Nemo, John. See, he's hiding in there. Yeah. Well, they're laying down. So they're clownfish, but they're they're actually endemic to here, so off the coast here. So, um, you know, you wouldn't find that particular species right up on the Gravero Reef. Okay. So they're here out to Lord Howe Island. Okay. So they're actually our own. Um, Type of clownfish. Okay, so when they lie flat, like you said, are they asleep or? Oh, they're just like this one here. See them there? Oh yeah, yeah. Just they the just oh, no, yeah. they just um, they're funny. Um, they have oh. a really funny social sort of behaviour, and they'll actually just like some other fish that swim sideways and stuff. Like they just okay. they're not they're not actually sleeping, but they're actually just just resting maybe. Yeah, right? they're a pretty chill sort of a fish. Yeah, it's just part of their behaviour. Um, and they just. Yeah, it's so cool. cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty live that plane? Yeah, so it's so it's a, no no no. So it's all alive. So, um, so these guys will actually this particular species particularly they'll actually feed feed the enemy. Oh, so they'll oh. actually um, so they'll actually when we when we put food in and stuff, yeah. these guys will actually grab the food and they'll make sure. So if you drop it over to the enemy, they don't really sort of mind. But if you drop it to the side, sort of here. You'll actually see them grab the food and they'll they'll throw it into the anemone because the anemone actually has a mouth and it can actually absorb, um, absorb take take the food in and, 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 and actually um, digest it. That's crazy. So they'll actually help feed it. And in return, obviously, they get to live in there. And not all fish can swim in through those those okay. tentacles. Um, we take water from the ocean, so we actually underneath the beach down there, we can actually suck ocean water, oh. and it comes up to the top of the building, yeah. and it's gravity fed down, and then it flows back out to the ocean. So we can actually have ocean water coming in. When you keep a marine tank, usually it's really difficult because you have to go and get ocean water all the time. If you live yeah, 30 minutes yeah, away from, from an ocean yeah. um, area where you can take water from, you have to go every week. The more often you do it, the better the health of the um, okay. fish and the coral and, and, and whatnot is. And we're really lucky that we can just, just take ocean something. water yeah. inside food. Obviously, we're trying to get her, um, oh, that might have got it the top of a beaker we had in there that, that she's pulled off. We can't, it's hard to get stuff out of her tank because when you open the tank up, she comes down. Like she tries oh. to come out, so she'll put her arms up over here. It's not the best feeling. Like, there's oh, a lot really? of people out there that love octopus. So I like them, they're very interesting and they're incredible. Like, that, when they put their tentacles up your arms, it's a funny feeling. Like, oh. it's not something you, you know. Oh, wow. But her tank's tied down very well. Yeah. Because they can squeeze out through anything that they can fit their beak and eyes through. Oh, wow. So she can squeeze through the finest gaps. No so they just find themselves right So out. she has a beak as a mouth. You won't yep. be able to see it very well. Um, but when they um, eat, they, yeah, they use the beak. And okay. so that's a hard part. And so, and the same with their eyes. Their eyes can only be squeezed so much. But she can fit, yeah, yeah. anything else through. Wow. Yeah, so. That's crazy. See, how long can she live out of water? Oh, she, she'll, she'll do a bit of a, of a um, stint across to try and they like to hunt so they like to leave the place and go looking for food so they um yeah they they do sort of travel but they they can't like they wouldn't be able to live you know, really long like hours and hours and hours but so if she gets out of the tank she can crawl around until she finds another tank and jump in and, okay and so eat. but that's why we have to have her you know locked in because if she got in here she would eat that that, that coral banded shrimp the, oh, you can see the antennas coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, they are very renowned escape artists. What sort of um, octopus is a it? A gloomy octopus. A gloomy octopus. A gloomy octopus, yeah. Oh. Is there anything that sits still for too long she'll eat? Yeah, she likes crustaceans, so like little lobsters and prawns. Oh, so she won't eat these fish, obviously. Oh, she could if she wanted to. She could grab one of them in, in, in about 30 seconds, but she we keep her pretty well fed. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, so she doesn't really. <laughs> Eat them, but if she got hungry, she um, 
So when did they squirt out like the ink? Yep. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. They're very interesting. I think depending on how many people come through, we often feed the octopus first as the, as, as the feeding okay. and the talk in the first session. So we might um, end up doing that and talk a bit more about it, but um, they're really interesting. I mean, they've got, <laughs> they've got blue blood. They've oh. got red blood, they've got blue blood. You can oh. have copper-based blood, not um, iron, which is got the globin like us. Yeah. Um, they've got three hearts, oh. not one. So that they're very different and, and that their, their brain is, is very different as well. Um, a really high concentration of neurons at the base of each arm as well as the head because it takes a lot of um, of uh, um, electrical impulses from the brain and traveling throughout the, the body, body to yeah. change the color okay. and she can change her texture too so she becomes spiky oh. um, so how old, how old is this one well we think that she was about six months old when we got her about christmas time yep so she's probably about a year is that fully grown yeah she won't get too much bigger she's only an inch or species so they don't they don't get huge okay. like the, so I'm going to live for about another year. Okay. I'm going to live for about two years, so we'll let it go, oh. we'll let it go to breed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That fish looks grumpy. No, look, just in here. <laughs> Is it a touch pull? Oh, I don't know. I think it would be. Well, normally say that it isn't. Touch that one. Oh, he's spiky. One. He's got the slug. Oh, that's so soft. So welcome to the Solitary Islands Aquarium, guys. My name's Beck. I'm one of the aquarium guides here, and you probably also met Luke on the front desk today. So. Everything you see in the aquarium, um, all the marine life here is very typical of what you would find in the waters off the coast, um, harbour coastline here in the Solitary Islands Marine Park. So the marine park was established over 20 years ago because they realised we have a very unique marine environment here with a very high biodiversity of marine life. So there are over 550 uh, different species of fish and over 100 species of hard coral within the marine park. And what gives us this high biodiversity are two currents that come past our coastline. One of these currents is the EAC, the East Australian Current. Now the EAC is a warm water western boundary current that starts all the way up in the Coral Sea, so the Great Barrier Reef. And this warm water current travels past here, past Coffs Harbour, just on the eastern side of South Solitary and North Solitary Islands, so about 12 kilometres off the coastline. And it does travel further south here, eddying off down around Southwest Rocks. Now this is a really fast moving current at its strongest, which it is currently at its strongest in early autumn. It can take three days from water that was once up in the Great Barrier Reef to reach Coffs Harbour. So phenomenally fast current. And as I said, very warm water. 
Now this current acts as a mode of transport for lots of larvae of tropical fish species, so all of those beautiful small bright coloured fish you see here today, but also many of the hard corals. And these little microscopic larvae decide that it's actually a really beautiful home here in the Coffs Harbour area and they actually settle out in many of the, uh, the islands in the marine park. Now, as I said, we also have a counter current. So we have a cold water current that runs in the opposite direction to the EAC, so from south to north. And this cold water current runs up from the Tasman Sea area, so down around Sydney. It's an inshore current, so it sticks very close to the shoreline and it brings lots of cold, nutrient-rich water to the area. So in turn, provides lots of food for all of our marine life here. So in the middle of summer, it can be over 30 degrees here, a really hot day, you want to go for a swim and you go down to the ocean and you get kind of disappointed because it looks green, it's not crystal clear, and you put your toes in and it's freezing cold. That is the cold counter current you're feeling. But if you were to get in a boat and travel about four or five kilometers offshore, the water will start to get cleaner and warmer, and that is the EAC you're feeling. So even though summertime it's not necessarily at its strongest, it still really influences the area, the water temperature and the clarity um, within the marine park. Gloomy octopus or octopus tetricus. Now today we're going to introduce you to Madonna. Now Madonna has been with us since before Christmas, Christmas was it? Before yeah. Christmas. And when she came to us, she was teeny tiny. She was about this big, so she was quite young. Um, she's now grown into probably a fully mature octopus uh, species. Now octopus we know they have eight arms and on each of those arms are approximately 240 suckers so a lot of suckers on each arm now they're not only used to uh, move around so they obviously act as hydraulics pumping water in and out for movement she can also taste with those suckers so that's pretty handy when you like to feed at night time which she primarily does she can move those arms and taste so many different things and decide whether something is edible or not now to eat inside those eight arms, she does have a little mouth, it's quite small, and inside that mouth is a little beak. So it's a tiny little um, hard beak, it's very similar to um, the material like a fingernail, so keratin based. And she uses that beak um, to rasp on the outside of shells, so she loves to eat clams and other marine gastropods and mollusks. And she can't just rip them open, even though she is very strong, they're very hard to get open. So she just rasps a little hole on the outside of the shell. She injects some venom into uh, the animal and that paralyzes it, then oh. she can rip it open. So all octopus have venom, but only uh, two species um, can harm us. And she generally, um, they're not an aggressive species, so she wouldn't try and bite us or try to inject the venom. It's purely for feeding purposes. Now, That's cool. we'll talk a little bit about octopus biology. Um, it's quite fascinating. So in that big head of hers, are all her important organs such as her brain, her heart, her other heart and her other heart. So she has three hearts which is pretty crazy but she is obviously very unique um, to have three hearts but they all have a purpose. So one heart um, is purely to provide oxygen um, and blood to her important organs such as her brain but it's also to do with her blood makeup and movement. So she has very two large gills just under her eyes there, so that's how she breathes, pumping water through those gills, provides lots of oxygen to her body, but it's due to her blood makeup that she needs those two hearts. So the blood is rich in hemocyanin, so it's copper-based, unlike ours, which is iron-based. And copper-based blood um, is more efficient at transporting oxygen through her body in cooler waters. So she is a temporal um, subtropical species of octopus, so would live most of her life in cooler water. And that hemocyanin is much better at transporting oxygen around her body um, in those cool water environments. And obviously those two hearts, it's all to do with the movement. She needs two hearts to be able to move, especially when it comes time to um, get away from something really quickly. She can use jet propulsion, but she can't do that consistently. She's got about two goes or three goes at jet um, propulsion because those two hearts are working really hard. The other heart actually stops while she does it. So it's a, it's a really uh, unique way of getting oxygen to all those important areas of her body, but also to ensure movement. Now her brain, her brain is sectioned into nine different parts. 
and that is pretty cool as well. So she can actually switch parts on and off um, as she's going about her daily life. And I've actually come down one day and found her, it was when she was quite young, it's like someone had got a black texture, drawn a line straight down the middle of her and half was very dark, almost black, and the other half was white. So half of her was sleeping and the other half was awake. <laughs> That's pretty cool That's and they can cool. do that obviously parts of their brain shut down parts for a rest while the other stays alert. Well, here we go. So Snowy would be able to... Jump. Oh, she knows that. There you go. He's swimming. So she, she plays with it a little bit but... Usually she'll take the lid off pretty fast. In fact, she's obviously got the tank open, so she's, she's, she's just feeling to see if the tank got closed properly. See if she can get out. <laughs> oh, she's under it straight away. Yeah, those little, those little arms, they, they feel around up there. Oh, she's taking it right up the top. Because she can fit through any gap that she can get those eyes and her beak through. Which is pretty small. So now, even though we refer to Madonna um, as being female, we actually don't know if it's female or male. Um, it's very hard to tell the sex of an octopus without having to euthanize it. Um, what we would need to do, I would need to get her to stay very still and display all of those arms um, up on the glass here. I'd then count third on to the left. I'd then have to count all the suckers on those arms. If it was an uneven amount, she'd be a male. Um, even amount, for, uh, she would be a female. Um, it is different with each octopus species, though, on how to tell the sex. Some it's a little bit easier. So here at the aquarium, we alternate between male and female. If she was a female out in the wild, and she would reach maturity, which would probably be in the next couple of months, and a male octopus would present themselves to her, she would flash a white eyebrow at one of them if she was interested. That gives them the go ahead pass a sperm packet to her, so up under their mantle, they would grab a sperm packet, pass it to her with an outstretched arm, she would pop it under her mantle and fertilise her eggs. He would swim off very quickly because she might eat him, because uh, then that, that would be her last meal. So once those eggs are fertilised, she then goes off and lays thousands of little baby octopus eggs, usually in her den or a rocky outcrop area. Her job then is to tend to those eggs 24 seven. So she has to obviously protect them because they're probably tasty little morsels for fish, um, but also to keep them aerated. She won't leave to eat, but absolutely anything. She will die to protect those eggs. And as soon as that first one starts to hatch, she actually starts to die, um, which is pretty sad. Octopus. It's an anglerfish. So it's got an interesting story as well. Yeah, Can you see above the um, eye there, see the little pink thing? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. a worm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually flicks it up on a little stick and um, it actually wiggles it around. So it's actually part of the fish. It wiggles it around, that, that little, um, that's what they call an angler fish. So it fishes for its food. Oh, so when that little worm that's wiggles, weird. an unsuspecting fish comes along and just absolutely loves that sensation of a wiggling worm, yeah. thinks our oh, dinner, comes along to eat it and that Anglerfish can open that mouth really large, massive jaws, and just completely consume whatever comes towards his little worm. And it oh. looks like he's got little hands and feet that are stabilizing him. Yeah, I know. Him. They're little fins, but they look wow. like they can prop him up like, um, because he obviously spends most of the time on the ground, um, like a benthic sort of a species, so they don't swim around so a lot. so cute. He's mainly sitting there, not moving. And he's supposed to look like a sponge. Like, he looks just like a sponge. Yeah, a bit yeah. of growth on the rock. He's pretty good camouflage. He's got the little beard going and everything, but um, they're amazing. Like, um, he looks grumpy. Yeah, he looks like a sad face. That's his jaw. Yeah. Because he's got that big oh, jaw. Oh, he's blinking. Yeah, he's moving his eyes. He's, he watches everything. Yeah. The aquarium. I loved it. It was really good. So it was. I think it was fifteen dollars adults, twelve dollars for concession. Can't remember kids. You have to book online. I think it's a five bucks. I think. I didn't really take any notice because no. we don't have kids. Yeah. But, um, but it was, yeah, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I know, right? It's small. It's a very small place. But well, we've been in there for an hour and a half. And um, the, the, the guides. 
the end of guys the octopus was the best just gotta say that yeah. jump in the octopus was cool oh my god they feed him and they put a prawn in like a bunsen burner type thing with a top on it and um it takes the lid off <laughs> he knows how to take the lid off and eats it that was that was so good yeah. that was really really good um but worth it well, you're worth a look yeah come and check it out for sure yeah anyhow that, yeah we enjoyed that so thanks for watching have a great day don't forget to give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and um we'll see you next episode bye